So up until now, the weak acids and weak bases that we have been using have been neutral. And so what we're going to do now is expand our idea of acids and bases to include ions. To better understand this idea, we need to look at the equilibrium um, of a weak acid such as HF. So here we see HF giving up a proton to form its conjugate base F minus, and there is a corresponding Ka for this reaction. One of the things we need to remember, uh, we call F minus a conjugate base, but F minus is actually um, basic, such that if we were to put F minus into a solution, the solution would become basic. So now we need to take a minute and understand how that happens and how we can do some calculations with this. So if I want to put F minus into solution, I got to remember I need to have a positively charged species along with this. I need to make it as a salt. So typically the conjugate bases of weak acids like F minus are um, paired up with group one metals to form salts. So you get things like calcium fluoride or sodium acetate. They don't necessarily have to be group one metals, but they are the most common. So if I want to put F minus into solution to um, make something basic, really what I need to add is something like sodium fluoride. And then I realize that sodium fluoride is a soluble salt, and so it's going to disassociate 100% into NAF and F minus. And it's the F minus that we are interested in, and that's the equilibrium that we're going to be looking at. So if I have just F minus, um, it's going to react as a base. We're going to have a KB reaction. So F minus reacts with water to form now uh, the conjugate acid, which is the original weak acid. So F minus grabs a proton from water to form HF, and in doing this, we end up forming hydroxide. So remember, uh, it's a KB reaction because we are producing hydroxide inside of it. But one of the things I think is fascinating is the original Ka reaction here, and now the KB reaction for the conjugate base are actually um, linked to each other. So Ka times KB is equal to Kw. And so in this case, because we are given Ka, we can find the KB for this um, basic equilibrium by um, doing this simple calculation that Kw divided by Ka is equal to Kb. So um, Kw is a constant, Ka was given, and so we were able to find this Kb. So let's go ahead and do a simple calculation utilizing this idea. So we want to find out what the pH of a solution of NaF is. I do need to take a second and realize that for every one mole of NaF I put into solution, I get one mole of F minus. So NaF really isn't involved in our equilibrium. It's F minus that we're interested in. And in this case, it's a one to one mole ratio. So if I have two molar NaF, I uh, have two molar F minus. But sometimes you need to check this. Sometimes the ratio uh, may be slightly different. But really what we're playing around with is a 2.0 molar of solution of F minus. So we know this is a KB reaction. F minus is going to react with water to form HF. It's going to remove a proton. And in doing that, we're going to form hydroxide here. So we know this is a KB. So what we do is we assume that our two molar of F minus, X amount of that's going to go away to form X amount of HF and X amount of OH minus. <clears throat> we write the KB equilibrium expression, products divided by reactants. Remember, water doesn't make it, and we put this theoretical value into our KB expression. We then go ahead and assume X is small and solve for X. So this X goes away. Um, we multiply both sides by 2. X times X gives us X squared. And then when we take the square root, we get uh, X, which we designated up here as being the concentration of hydroxide. Remember the question asked for the pH though, so what we do in this case is we go ahead and find the pOH, which is negative the log of the concentration of hydroxide, and then we realize that the pH is equal to 14 minus the pOH. So in this case the pH is 8.7. And that makes sense because we are playing around with a base, we would expect the pH to be greater than 7, we would expect the solution to be basic. So the same basic idea is also true for the conjugate acids um, made from a weak base. So here we have ammonia reacting with water to form ammonium. 
ammonium is the conjugate acid and this conjugate acid is actually acidic if we put it in solution by itself. Um, the same basic idea, I just can't have uh, NH4 plus by itself. I need to have a counter ion, something negatively charged. So most of the time that's like a chloride or a bromide. There are some other things that you can use as, as a negatively charged species. But if we add um, ammonium chloride into solution, the ammonium chloride disassociates and now the ammonium reacts to have a um, Ka equilibrium. So ammonium reacts with water to form ammonia and hydronium. And it's the same basic idea for conjugate acids and conjugate bases, Ka times Kb is equal to Kw. So if we know the, the Ka, I mean, excuse me, if we know the Kb for this reaction, we are able to calculate the um, Ka for this reaction.